OpenAI just launched Atlas, a browser where ChatGPT lives inside every web page. So I immediately started testing it, rewriting emails without copy pasting, booking flights with just voice commands, even searching through your entire browsing history by just asking. This is wild, but here's what everyone's asking me. Perplexity's Comet has been doing this for months. So I put them head to head, five real tests, same tasks, and what I found? not what I expected. Let me show you how Atlas actually works first. Quick thing though, I've got a weekly newsletter where I break down all the latest AI updates, the tools worth trying and the ones you should skip. It's completely free and honestly, it's the best way to stay ahead with all this AI stuff. Links in the description below. See these tabs at the top? Chat for AI responses, links for traditional search results, images, videos, news. You get both AI answers and traditional search all in one place. You don't have to juggle between Google and ChatGPT anymore. It's all here. But here's what makes this really powerful. I can ask follow-up questions like a real conversation. Check it out. Which cities should I prioritize? And it gives me a complete prioritized result. Now let's ask more. What's the budget for a 10-day trip? Give me budget in Indian rupees. Oh wait, it already provided the budget in Indian rupees without me even asking. As you can see, Atlas remembers the context. It must have recognized I'm from India and automatically converted the prices. It knows we're talking about Japan, about traveling and when we're planning to go. This is what browsing with AI actually means. Now, the next feature is the one that eliminates all the copy pasting you've been doing between the browser and ChatGPT. Let's say I'm on this Anthropic Economic Index report and I want to summarize it. In Atlas, watch this. I just have to click on this icon called Ask Chat GPT and it opens right next to the page. Now Chat GPT can see the page I am on. I don't need to copy paste anything. Now let's ask Chat GPT to summarize this article in three bullet points. Let's see what's the output we get. Done instantly. Now instantly we got three important bullet points and we don't have to do copy pasting and switch tabs. But let me show you where this actually becomes useful. Let's say you're shopping for protein powder on Flipkart. There's so many options and you've got 10,000 reviews to go through. You just want to know, is this product actually good? Watch what happens. First, is this the best price for this product? Look at that. It pulled the pricing, the discount, everything on the page. But here's where it gets interesting. Analyze all the reviews and summarize them for me. It just read through thousands of reviews. Overall, rating 4.5 stars. Here's the positive feedback. Here's the negative feedback. An hour of review reading in 10 seconds. Think about how you normally shop. You open 15 tabs, scroll through hundreds of reviews, compare prices across websites. ChatGPT just did all of that. And this works everywhere. All right, here's another feature that's actually pretty useful. You know, when you're writing an email and you type something like, if you want to stay ahead in AI, and then you realize it sounds kind of rough, normally you'd open ChatGPT in another tab, paste your text, ask it to make it better, copy the result, paste it back into Gmail. That's like six steps just to fix one email. Watch this. I'm writing, if you're not learning AI today, you'll be replaced by someone who did. Now look, when I select this text, a chat GPT icon appears right here. I click it. Text box pops up. Write a complete email around this. And hit enter. It just wrote the entire email directly in my draft. No switching tabs, no copy pasting. It's just there, but it gets better. Let's say I want to make this part more casual. Make this more casual. If you're not learning AI right now, someone who is will soon take your spot. Click update, done. So every text box becomes a chat GPT canvas and this works everywhere you write. Okay, this next one is kind of wild. So yesterday I was looking at these perfect Nike shoes online, green ones. But now I can't remember which website. Normally I'd spend like 10 to 15 minutes clicking through my browser history, trying to find them. That's where the memory feature comes in. Watch this. Can you find the green Nike shoes I was looking at? It's searching my browser history. Air Jordan, one retro direct link. Exact product. Let me try another one. Show me the red tape shoes in my history. Eight different links. Flipkart listings, Mintra pages, YouTube reviews, every red tape shoe I looked at, all organized. So here's the thing though. This memory feature is completely optional. In fact, it's off by default. To turn it on, you go to settings, personalization, toggle reference saved memories. That's when ChatGPT can see your browsing history. 
your browser just became a searchable database of everything you've seen. That product you wanted to compare, that article you meant to read, all instantly recallable. But OpenAI knows AI tracking everything I do sounds scary, so they gave you complete control. You can view all saved memories, delete specific ones, clear everything, or just use incognito when nothing gets saved. Now for the feature, everyone's hyped about agent mode. ChatGPT can supposedly book flights, find coupons, and handle reservations, all by itself. Let me show you what actually happens. Choose the agent mode and type the prompt. Find flights from Bangalore to Mumbai for next Friday morning. Watch its opening Google flights. Entering cities, selecting dates, the cursor's moving on its own. Finds the flight options, but they're in dollars. Show these in Indian rupees. It converted every price and put them in the sidebar. I haven't touched anything. Now book the, the Indigo 5.30 AM flight. Look, it stopped. I've encountered instructions on this page. For security reasons, I won't follow those without your confirmation. Permission required before sensitive actions. That's actually smart. Instead of booking, let me test something more useful. Find the best coupons or discounts for this flight. It's checking every available coupon. Now let's try trains. Book a train via IRCTC from Bangalore to Mumbai. It's opening IRCTC, pulling up trains, showing me options with timings and classes. Then it asks which train I want and requests my IRCTC login. It works, kind of, but it's painfully slow. Here's the thing, they don't tell you. Agent mode takes forever. That flight search, several minutes, task you do manually in 30 seconds turn into a coffee break and it's locked behind a paywall. Everything else in Atlas, the sidebar, browser memories, inline writing, that's all free. But agent mode is the premium feature. If you're already paying for plus, try it out. It's worth experimenting with, but don't subscribe just for agent mode. But here's the thing, Atlas isn't the only AI browser out there. Perplexity's Comet has been in the market for months now. People have been using it as their daily AI browser. Same idea. Agent mode, automation, AI powered browsing. So I'm putting Atlas and Comet head to head. Same task. Atlas on the left, Comet on the right. Let's see which one actually performs better in real world use cases. First test, turning a casual message into a professional email. Something you probably do multiple times a day. Here's my rough draft. Hey man, about that meeting we discussed, can we do it tomorrow? Now I'll ask both browser's assistants to rewrite this as a professional business email and insert it directly into the Compose window. First thing I notice, Atlas needs me to enable agent mode manually. Comet just does it automatically. Point to Comet for UX. All right, both are processing. Atlas is done. Opens the Compose window, rewrites it, inserts the email, clean. Wait Comet's asking me questions in the chat. It's not inserting anything into the Compose window. It's confused about where the rough draft email is. Okay, so the prompt was vague. I didn't tell it where the raw email was. Atlas figured it out anyway. Comet didn't. Let me be more specific. Rewrite the raw email draft written in the email compose window as a professional business email and insert it directly into that window. Now Comet gets it. There we go. Email inserted. So let's look at both results. Atlas gets the job done. Now Comet, this one's more polished, flows better, sounds more natural. Atlas understood the vague prompt better, worked on the first try. But once Comet understood what I wanted, it delivered a better email and it was faster. With the right prompt, Comet wins this round. Score, Comet 1, Atlas 0. Test 2, YouTube timestamp hunting. This one's interesting. We've got a 20 minute video and I need both browsers to find one specific moment inside it. This is where AI browsers should actually save you time and the hassle of manual scrubbing. Here's what I'm asking them to do. Go to Vibhav Sisinti's YouTube channel. Find his video comparing Sora 2 and Veo 3.1. Jump to the exact moment where he talks about Veo's extend scene feature and play it. Both start working. Right away, Atlas does something I like. It automatically suggests agent mode. I don't have to turn it on myself. That's pretty smart. Comet just starts working. No questions asked. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Atlas asks for permission first before activating agent mode. Takes a few extra seconds. Comet's already searching, but then Atlas catches up fast. It actually identified the correct video first before Comet does, and then an ad plays. Atlas just stops. It's sitting there trying to figure out how to skip the ad. Comet doesn't even have this problem, must have an ad blocker running by default. By the time Atlas figures out the skip button, Comet's already analyzing the video transcript. Comet finds the timestamp first, lands right on it. Atlas gets there eventually, jumps to the scene, but it's off. 
like a few minutes off. So let's break this down. Atlas had the smarter approach, asking permission, finding the video first. But Comet executed faster and more accurately. The ad blocker thing is a real advantage when you're trying to auto-navigate YouTube. So the scores now Comet 2 and Atlas 0. Test 3. Price comparison. This is the practical one. Can these browsers actually save you money by comparing prices across websites? Because normally you'd spend 20 to 30 minutes opening tabs, checking offers, comparing everything manually. Here's what I'm asking both. Find the current price for iPhone 17, 256 gigabytes on Flipkart, Amazon India and Vijay Sales. Include all bank offers, exchange bonuses and EMI schemes. Tell me which is cheapest. I hit enter on both. Atlas is warring in agent mode and it starts opening websites. Comet just starts processing. No agent mode preview, no asking, it's just working. Comet finishes first, shows me results with pricing data. But wait, let me check the sources. This isn't pulling from the actual websites. It's analyzing articles about iPhone pricing, tech blog data, comparison site summaries. And look, no Amazon India data at all. It completely missed one of the three sites I asked for. Now Atlas. It took way longer, but look at what it's doing. It actually opened Amazon.in, actually loaded Flipkart's product page, actually checked Vijay sales, it's pulling real-time prices with current offers. So here's the difference. Comet gave me analysis from articles. Fast, but not what I asked for. Atlas gave me actual live data from the three specific websites. Slower, but accurate. This shows something important about how these browsers work. Comet Auto decides when to use agent mode. Sometimes it goes to websites. Sometimes it just searches for articles. You can't control it. Atlas, you choose. When you need real website data, you enable agent mode. When quick web research is enough, you skip it. For price comparison, I need real data. Current offers. Atlas wins this one. More accurate, actually visited the sites I asked for. Score. Comet 2. Atlas 1. Fourth test. Financial analysis. Simple question. How much debt do they have and is it too much compared to their earnings? Both start processing. Reading through the tabs, analyzing numbers, Comet finishes first shows me total debt with full context, but then it goes further. Generates a debt fluctuation graph, year-over-year -year trends, comparison to earnings. Proper financial analysis with visuals. Atlas is still calculating. Eventually, Atlas finishes. Clean breakdown shows the debt figure. But wait, the numbers don't match. Comet says one figure. Atlas says something completely different. We're not talking small differences here. This is crores of rupees off. Let me dig into this. Comet broke it down into gross debt and net debt. Two separate figures with explanations. Atlas gave me total debt as a single number, so they might be calculating different things. Comet could be showing net debt after adjustments. Atlas might be showing total debt before deductions. Both could technically be correct, just measuring different metrics. And this is important. For financial decisions, context matters. Are we looking at gross debt? net debt or total liabilities. The AI might be right, but without knowing which specific metric it's using, the number alone doesn't tell the full story. This is where AI becomes a starting point, not the final answer. Comet wins on speed and presentation. The visualizations are excellent, but the number discrepancy shows exactly why you still need to verify AI outputs for financial analysis. These browsers can drastically cut down analysis time, but for critical financial decisions, they're powerful assistants and not replacements for actually checking the work. Final test, calendar scheduling. This one's complex. Check my Google Calendar, find free slots, draft a meeting email, multi-step task with real data. This is where we see which browser can actually handle workflows, not just quick searches. I give both the same prompt. Check my Google Calendar for next week. Find three one-hour slots between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. when I'm free. Draft a meeting invite email suggesting these times for a product demo. Here's something weird. Atlas doesn't auto-suggest agent mode this time. In the YouTube test, it was smart enough to detect when it needed agent mode. Now, nothing. I have to manually enable it. Comet just starts working. No questions. But then Comet hits a problem. The split screen view is throwing it off. It's struggling to read my calendar properly. Eventually, Comet gives me output, a perfectly written meeting email. Professional tone, good format, includes time slots. But it doesn't send it. It just hands me the text and says copy-paste this yourself. Atlas, 
It's actually in my calendar. Finding the slots, drafting the email directly in Gmail, and then it tries to send the email. I stop it there. I don't want a test accidentally sending real emails from my account. But here's what matters. Atlas asked for permission before sending. It got all the way to the send button and paused for human approval. This shows two different approaches. Comet's philosophy. I'll give you the output. You handle the sensitive stuff. Manual control, privacy by default. Atlas's philosophy. I'll do everything but ask permission for risky actions. Full automation with checkpoints. For calendar scheduling, you need the full workflow completed, not just a draft. Atlas did that. Comet stopped halfway. Atlas wins this one. Final score: Comet two, Atlas two. So we've got a tie. But here's the pattern: If you need quick searches and basic automation, Comet's faster and more polished. If you need actual work done, checking real websites, completing full workflows, handling sensitive actions carefully, Atlas gives you more control. The AI browser war isn't about one winner. It's about knowing which tool fits what you're trying to do. Which browser did you prefer? If this comparison helped you decide, hit that like button. Subscribe for more AI tool breakdowns. To stay updated in all this chaos, join our WhatsApp community links in the description. All right, I'll see you in the next one.